Hey guys, this is Webpeak. Today I would like to show you my solutions for the exercise I left in the first lesson. If you are looking for more related exercise, please follow my Discord channel. I will share some files later related to the topic. Well, let's get started. After spending some moment on looking at the diagram, you may realize that A, P, C1, and Q are concyclic. So this is the first claim I'm going to prove. Indeed, the in-circle is tangent to the side B, C. So by tangent core theorem, the angle C1, Q, A1 equals to the angle C1, A1, B. Now since A, P is parallel to B, C, this angle C1, A1, B also equals to the angle C1, P, A. Therefore, the opposite angles of the quadrilateral A, P, C1, and Q are supplementary, which means that they are concyclic. Next, we are going to use this concyclic property to perform angle tracing. Indeed, it tells us that the angle P, Q, A equals to the angle PC1A, which is the same as the angle A1C1B. Now since the in-circle is tangent to AB as well, applying a second time tangent core theorem tells us that the angle A1C1B equals to the angle A1QC1. So finally we have these two green angles are equals to each other. So far, we have been focusing on the left-hand side of the diagram. If now we look at the right-hand side, we can prove that A, R, B1, and Q are concyclic by similar argument. And moreover, the angle A, Q, R, this red angle, equals to the angle B1, Q, A1. Then we are done because the angle P, Q, R is the sum of the green and the red angle and so is the angle B1QC1. Well, well done if you find out the solution by yourself. Before moving on to the next problem, I want to remark that the point Q is also a Miguel point. But this Miguel point is defined with respect to a triangle. So let's see what does it mean. Here is the Miguel's theorem. Let D, E, F be any points on the line B, C, C, A, and A, B. The claim is that the circumcircle of A, E, F, B, F, D, and C, D, E pass through a common point. And this common point is called the Miguel point of D, E, F with respect to the triangle A, B, C. I want to emphasize that the theorem still holds when the points D, E, and F lies outside the triangle, as shown in the below figure. Now you may ask how this theorem is related to the Miguel point I defined in the first lesson. So let's consider a special case that the points D, E, and F are collinear. Indeed, if D, E, and F are collinear, then we get the Steiner's quadrilateral theorem. In this case, the Miguel point M lies on the circumcircle of the triangle ABC, which is not true in general. In other words, we get four circumcircles passing through a common point, which is very close to what we have learned in the first lesson. So now let's see how they connect together. Now if I add one more condition that the points B, E, F, and C are concyclic with circumcenter O, then the Miguel point M lies on the line AD, and moreover the line OM is perpendicular to the line AD. And this is what we learned in the first lesson, which is called by the Miguel point of a cyclic quadrilateral. So to summarize, the Miguel point of a cyclic quadrilateral can be viewed as a special case of the Miguel point defined by a triangle. 
Sure, it is less general, but this additional condition provides us a better characterization about the point M. So I will show you some examples how to use these theorems in the next lesson. And now let's go back to our exercise. As in the first problem, we start by remarking some consecutive points. Here we will prove that A, B, R, Q are consecutive. So let's perform the angle chasing. First, since B, P, Q, C are on the same circle, the angle Q, B, R equals to the angle Q, P, C. Now since C, P is the tangent of the circle gamma 1, we have the angle Q, P, C equals to the angle Q, A, P. So finally we have Q, B, R equals to Q, A, P, which concludes that A, B, R, Q are consecutive. In order to prove that BP is tangent to the circle PQR, it is sufficient to show that the angle BPR matches the angle PQR. So again, we are going to decompose the angle into two parts, the red and the green part. Indeed, the angle PQR is the sum of the angle PQB and BQR. Then let me write it down. The angle PQR is the sum of the angle PQB and BQR. Now on one hand, by the consecutive property we have proof, the angle BQR matches the angle BAR. On the other hand, by the tangency of AB, the angle ABP equals to the angle PQB. So finally, the angle BPR is also the sum of the red and green angle, so it is equals to the angle PQR. So now we have proved that BP is tangent to PQR. And it is really the same thing to prove that BR is also tangent to PQR. I'm sure that you will figure it out. Now let's attack the IMO problem. In the previous problem, we just need to realize some consecutive property between the given points, which is really the easiest scenario. And this is not the case for this problem. I need to introduce some additional points. So first, let me translate the statement into some angle relations. Since F and G are the intersection of the two circles with center O and center A, we have that OA is the perpendicular bisector of FG. So to prove that X lies on AO, we just need to prove that XF equals to XG, or equivalently the angle XGF equals to the angle GFX. Since I want to perform angle tracing, it is easier to do it when the endpoints of the angles are on the same circle. So I would like to introduce two new points M and N on the circle O, such that the point M lies on the line FD and the point N lies on the line GE. And my claim is that the line MN is parallel to BC. To see it, we first remark that the angle GNM equals to the angle GFM, so these two red angles are equal. And moreover, since FDEG are concyclic, the angle GFM matches the opposite angle, which is the angle GEC. And this allows us to conclude that MN is parallel to BC. Now I'm going to evaluate the angle GFX, which is the difference between the angle DFX and the angle DFG. Then by consecutive property, the angle DFX is equal to the angle DBK, and the angle DFG is just the angle MFG. Now remarking that MFG equals to MBG, 
we finally get that this angle is the difference between this green and red angle which is CPA minus MBG. It is a bit hard to see from the diagram that there is an overlap between these two angles. But if you just write down the formula, you can see that the angle GBC is the overlap of them. Now removing this overlap, we get the angle GFX is the angle GBA minus the angle MBC, which is again the angle GFA minus the angle MBC. Now we perform a similar angle tracing on XGF. We get that the angle XGF equals to AGF minus BCN. Then on one hand, we have AF equals to AG. This means that the angle GFA equals to the angle AGF. On the other hand, BC is parallel to MM, which implies that the angle MBC equals to the angle BCN. And this allows us to conclude because both angles are the difference between the red and the green angle. So I hope you have learned some common patterns from all these angle tracing solutions. The key is to decompose the angles as the sum or the difference of some nice angles. In particular, it is always good to do it when you have some circles and try to use consecutive property. So I hope you enjoy the solutions and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.